Hello, lovely people, and welcome back to the Distinct and Jovial podcast. Uh, my name is Dominic, and again, as always, I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Jerry. How are you doing, oh, Jerry? I'm good, thank you, Dom. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. It's been a long week, which we'll, we'll get into a, into a sec. We are also joined this week by Adam, one, uh, one of my favourite people. Um, Hello. Uh, Hello. And we, uh, we, we've had uh, Laura on before, and... Adam is is brother in law to Laura. Yep. You didn't yep. look quite so sure. <laughs> <with Cam there. laughs> you just wonder what you were going to say. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling for this one, Adam? Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, I've listened to all the podcasts so far, um, and I think on all of them, I've sent you my uh, thoughts and suggestions to the various questions. Uh, so yeah, nice to be on. Yes, I, I did. I did have written down like you so far have come up with the best idea for a future podcast, which I'm not going to reveal. But what I do know is that mine and Jerry's next day is not going to be friendly. Okay, I, is it bad that I can't remember what suggestion that is? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but you're, I'm sure you. I'm sure you remember it. <laughs> wow. But it is the best suggestion for that podcast theme that we're going to do, and. Um, uh, you're also the only one that asked the question about the last podcast about what I said offline. <laughs> no, nobody else asked it. I'm still not going to tell them anybody on the podcast. I, say, yeah, you've, I don't think you've replied. No, I didn't reply deliberately. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you on. I'll tell you in Spain because what happens in Spain stays in Spain. Sounds like good. Vegas. <laughs> almost, almost. Myself and myself and Adam have a, a stag do that we're going to. So, what happens in Spain? We'll have to stay out in I'll Spain. Be, <laughs> I'll be under strict secrecy laws. <laughs> um, it is the 25th of February, 2022. Uh, this is episode nine. Um, and as always, our views are our own and don't represent the companies that we work for. Um, although, uh, Adam, you actually have a personal brand rather than a company, which we'll, yes. we'll go into later on in the podcast. <laughs> um. We, we do want to address a little bit the uh, the elephant in the room, so to speak. Uh, myself and Jerry may be mm, slightly less, I don't know, vibey perhaps is probably the right word. Uh, we've had a slightly long week. Um, unfortunately, we both work quite closely with people who are in um, Ukraine, uh, myself especially. Um, and in fact, some of those I've known for 10 years, we worked it out to be. Uh, so we've had a few uh, uh, interesting few days ahead with what's going on in the situation. Um, we are, I am especially disappointed in uh, a certain individual's actions towards a certain country. Um, and I, I especially do wish that, that my friends that are, and colleagues that are all out in Ukraine stay as safe as they can. Um, yeah. So if the, uh, the, the joviality will be as high as we can make it, but um, it's been a long week, so uh, we're not going to apologise. We're just going to I'll warn you now on this podcast. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I don't know. I I after our discussion yesterday, Dom, I thought, uh, do you know what? You know, I think for for me, the best thing I can do is just to be bring my A game. Mm. If this is all I have to do is is kind of push things out of my head, deal with the tiredness, deal with everything that I've had to deal with this week, but push through that and just record a damn good podcast for yeah. people that listen, just to put a smile <laughs> on their face and yeah, that's that's the frame of mind I'm in. I'm going for it. Full Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Full Leroy Jenkins, indeed. <laughs> And I, I'd use the the Robin Williams type of uh, like mantra when I when I when we go for these podcasts. I mean, if worst comes to worst, I'm just talking to two of my favourite people um, that I know. But if in doing so, I also put a smile on somebody's face, then I've achieved a small something in this world that isn't to do with war, famine, or just some pandemic that we've got to deal with. 
Will McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> we'll get into the McDonald's breakfast in a minute. <laughs> I have, I have, I have a separate mail, Royal Mail rant this this <laughs> month as well. <laughs> so mail, yeah. I'm happy to do Excellent. the Royal Mail rant. <laughs> I love the regular Royal Mail rant slot. It's brilliant. <laughs> we'll get into that later on. Um, as we've got, we've done quite a few food items now. Um, and it might turn into a bit interviewy style into, for, you, for you, Adam, but I'm quite curious to see how this goes. It's, it's nice to experiment with the podcast. We're just going to go through the old old um, food items that we've already done and just see what, what happens. So we'll start off. Yeah, what is your yeah. go-to we'll meal deal? We'll see how well my uh, answers map with all of the ones I've sent you on Messenger. <laughs> we'll see how I'm, consistent I'm, my views are. I, I'm not doing a pop quiz. I'm not going to compare them for you. <laughs> okay. So uh, supermarket meal deal. Um, I'm all about value for money. So if there is a triple sandwich there, I'm going for the triple sandwich. Um, if not, it's probably uh, chicken and bacon. Um, again drink wise looking at, at the value so you're going for one of the the smoothies um or i've got i've become quite partial to the uh iced coffee mockers that tesco's do um only only in the past past year or so quite nice um and then uh, greedy so uh, crisps and a chocolate bar just pushing that, that meal deal no well no one of them is always out of the meal deal but um <laughs> But but it tends to be the cheaper one that's not in the meal deal, which is nice. They uh, they yes. do give you that bargain. It's your 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 man after my own heart, like getting the, the best yeah. value for money that you physically can. Uh, yeah yeah, I want I want to see the biggest discount possible when I ring it through <laughs> the till. There, there is another option here, Adam. You could dress as a seagull <laughs> and go in and just nick it. <laughs> <laughs> that's. <laughs> I mean that that would give the potentially the best saving, but <laughs> opens up a bit of risk as well. Hey, no, there's no reward without some risk. <laughs> risk versus reward risk here. Risk versus, versus reward. reward. <laughs> exactly. Somebody somewhere is going to put that on a Jira board. <laughs> I mean, for the sake of like a, a three fifty mil deal, it's, <laughs> it's 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 quite a lot of risk. You T- know what? You serve what a year of a twelve-year sentence. <laughs> you won't have regrets. <laughs> That's It'll assuming he's let out for good behaviour. <laughs> uh, yeah. What are you trying to say, Dom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're extending your sentence because we don't like the fact that you nicked stuff from the prison canteen. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Inception. That's like a dream within a dream, isn't it? You kind of commit the crime within an institution where you're not supposed to commit any crime. <laughs> anyway, and it's all meal deal based as well. It's all meal deal, <laughs> yeah. Meal deal. Then you'll write a book. Meal deal ruined my life. <laughs> That's quite a catchy title though, because then it would be a case of how did it ruin my life? Did it ruin your life in a sense of I got too fat eating meal deals? Or did it ruin my life the fact that I stole one like a seagull and ended up in an institution? All way. of the above. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> all of the above. Just check the checkbox. <laughs> all of the above. Okay. Um. Well, we'll try and we'll try and steer clear of the rant. <laughs> <laughs> Go to McDonald's breakfast. Ah, easy. Double sausage and egg McMuffin meal. Possibly the extra hash brown on the side. No questions. Easy done. Easy done. Have, have we have we convinced you to come around, Jerry, to doing uh, a McDonald's breakfast yet? Nope. <laughs> oh, you've got to, you've got to give one a go. I have. <laughs> I, I I can't do I'm it. Still, I'm still traumatized. You see, you see, I'd I'd be up for the the get burgers earlier in the day, if they did breakfast later in the day as well. Ooh. So just have an all-day menu. Yeah. So you can go in there at four in the afternoon and get yourself a McMuffin. Oh, sounds reasonable to me. I could murder for a. a oh, I couldn't murder, but I egg McMuffin right now. That'd be. You see, just that. The thing. Yeah. So there, there we go. I mean, 
that's that's the sort of a compromise. It's, it's not about just kind of bringing the burgers earlier. It's just have a twenty four hour menu. The the thing for me is right everything available all the time. That you've got like uh, like you can get but you can obviously you know they serve things. You get McDonald's at twenty four hours. So at what point does the breakfast yep. menu kick in? And is it an even what, split? What time does it finish being night and become day? Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't base that upon like I've been I've been in at McDonald's at seven o'clock in the morning and I've seen people that are still out from the night before, but I've been to bed. So I want breakfast, but they probably want the burger. <laughs> I don't know why we. Didn't I don't know the saltiness of, of the sausage McMuffin. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. If you've been been drinking. Saltiness. Yeah, you're right. When you've been drinking, you want salty things, don't you? You want Mr. Porky's pork mm. scratchings and salty crisps and. Hmm. I don't know. I always find I don't because if I have something salty, I'm dehydrated from the alcohol, so that makes yeah, life so a little bit you difficult. Have hair of the dog. Oh, I've never done hair of the dog. <laughs> no, no. God, I've thought about it before, salty. but never. <laughs> I think I watched one of the, the one of the strangest um, hangover cures we've ever heard uh, was chocolate cake and quavers in the same mouthful as well. <sighs> Not even just at the same time, but in the yeah, in the same mouthful. Didn't give it a go. I mean, I I quite like salt, su- sweet, uh, sweet and savory together. Like you know, salted caramel is 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 amazing and things like that. Um, fruit and cheese, no, but quavers and chocolate. I mean, I'm not a fan of quavers. I I I am one of those heathens that doesn't like quavers. I think they're too floaty, but. Crisps and chocolate cake. I just <laughs> never heard of a crisp described as floaty. But they, they are. They just right. They're so with, they gum up in the mouth a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like you open up the pack and they they float out the pack because <laughs> they're filled with helium. So it's like you're on the International Space Station. So and right, you have okay. to catch them. <laughs> I I can explain my 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 floatiness and crisps so i i dislike several things about bags of crisps i dislike when you've got like crisps and you just get like like the bottom third is filled and the rest of it is all like air right that that annoys me i don't like it when crisp packets are like like they're like you can see they're like bulging with air as well so you can like rattle the crisps around that's ridiculous and then i don't i'm not a big fan of like floaty crisps so like quavers what's it's aren't really like the greatest thing known to man either because like you bite into one and then you're just like it's just full of disappointment because half of the damn crisp is air. well 75 percent of the crisp is air it's just like air contained by like a quaver by like the bits uh, i get what you mean yeah you're expecting so much volume but yeah there's, there's just nothing there you want um, something and, which is, is, is like got the, the mass and density of a black hole. Is that what you're looking <laughs> yeah, for? Yeah, I want my crisps <laughs> to have some density to it. <laughs> so do skips fit into that category of floaty? Yes. Yeah. But then would it would a knickknack be the opposite? Oh, yeah. Knick-knacks. Oh, knickknacks are good though. They are. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> got matter and antimatter. Yeah, you're exactly. right. <laughs> <laughs> knickknacks. Spicy, nice and spicy. Oh yeah, ribbon, r- ribbon saucy, ribbon saucy. Oh. <laughs> Knickknacks have the best names for them. <laughs> Judging by our conversation before we even started, <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Don't like floaty crisps. <laughs> Knickknacks. <laughs> Uh, the the third one that we've done, go to pizza topping. Uh, all the meats. Oh. <laughs> just <laughs> just take that as you will. Take that as you will. All the meats. All the meats. All the eights. 
If I'm, <laughs> yep, if I'm ordering a pizza, I'm going full full carnivore. If I've not got meat sweats by the end of it, there wasn't enough on there. Barbecue or tomato sauce? I'm quite partial to barbecue. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I quite like that little that little extra sweetness underneath it all. Heathen, yeah, heathen. That's almost think. as bad so, as. Pop- so I was tempted to go back and listen to all of these bits and just pick answers that were going to get the biggest <laughs> reactions and the most disgust out of both of you, but I thought I'd go for honesty. No, I like that honesty. All the meats, meaty meat. <laughs> That's yeah. The way forward. Yeah, yeah. All the meat Again, meat. meat is it's, it's probably a value thing as well. Meat's more expensive than vegetables. Don't waste your time having vegetables <laughs> on a pizza. Or fruit. <laughs> Fruits. I don't know, a couple of slices of peach. A bit of peach on the top of your pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to upset me? <laughs> a little bit on that one. It's okay. <laughs> I'll let you off. I mean, related to that, I had a son because, like, gammon. What do you have on top of your gammon? I don't often eat gammon, but I'd probably go fried egg over pineapple ring. I'd imagine you're a fried egg, Jerry. Yeah, I, I definitely. <laughs> That sounds good. <laughs> but then going pineapple gives you that salty sweet mix again. Yeah. No. I mean, Still I've had fruit though. <laughs> you're just you're just allergic That's to anything healthy. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we just need to reclassify pineapple? No. P- pineapple what? is the the most brutal fruit though. It eats your back. Hmm. Yeah. It does what? It eats your back. It eats you back. What? From it the does. Inside? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like aging. So it, it, well, yeah. it's one of the acids reacts to. Is it reacts to the saliva and actually just starts to kind of dissolve your your tongue in your inside of your mouth. Yes. <laughs> the face that Jerry is pulling, by the way, now <laughs> is is a brilliant. I've just got yeah. visions of like somebody being pinned down on a table. Yeah. Yeah. And this pineapple just bursts out their chest. <laughs> it's all like scene from Alien. I thought you were just going to say, like, someone's being interrogated and they're just wiping pineapple on, the, on his face. <laughs> his face is slowly melting. Yeah. This is horrible. <laughs> that's, look at I've got, that's, that's some kind of James Bond villain type uh, kind of torture. <laughs> it's like, we're going to kill you slowly with a cut up pineapple. This might take about anywhere between one and three just, weeks. Just going to rub it on you. <laughs> it's going to give you plenty of time to escape. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to let my second in command do it for me. <laughs> I'm going to leave. Just going to go and grab a McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> oh, dear. Boris? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to dissolve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, the lads. That is the best thing I've ever heard all day. Yeah, but it's also interesting. It's also why pineapple is very good if you have a cold, because it attacks mucus, so it reduces your mucus um, uh, production. So, yeah. what is this I, toilet cleaner? What else is yeah, it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> just what are you doing cup, pineapple? Slap, slap a pineapple. Just oh, I've got visions now of going to your house, Jerry, opening up your toilet and just finding a whole pineapple <laughs> stuck at the top. Be, like, oh, you, Jerry's doing his cleaning. You, you've got to peel it first. You, <laughs> you've got to peel it, then you've got to put a little hook in it and hook it over the, like, the lip of the toilet bowl and then you just have a big pineapple in the middle of your toilet. <laughs> put it put it in the system and then you get a nice, nice fresh oh, pineapple scent actually, every time you well, flush. <laughs> As long as you take the stalk out, because you don't want to be sitting on that when you want to go. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. And if you get a splashback, <laughs> you're going to have to avoid <laughs> Neptune's kiss, aren't you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you regret coming on now? <laughs> no. no. Not yet. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, let's move on. Uh... Go to Nando's order. Now, this was the hardest one because I rarely go to Nando's. So I've not been enough to say that I've got a go-to order. Oh. Um, yeah. 
So it would it would either be depending on the mood chicken burger or just a, a half a chicken and go not too spicy. I was to say what the, the the most common phrase is what's the what's your spice level? What's the spice? Not not the the bland one. Plainish. Probably one above that. Yeah. So it was lemon and herb is like the the bland one. So I'd probably go one one above that. What? that is yeah you can get like um plainish which is the bottom one and you get like a lemon and herb or they do a mango one which is which they do limited time which is the best and then yeah then it gets a bit hotter and hotter onto the schofield yeah. the schofield scale which is what we were talking about I'm, I'm assuming mango is out for jerry no i that appeals to me yeah that's, seriously actually okay this that's is, an allowable fruit yeah what about mango on pizza then no, definitely not. <laughs> but a mango, mango marinade, a mango and chili marinade, mango sauce with chicken. That yeah, that'd be good. Mm. Oh, this is make this is shaking things up a bit now. Yeah, it, I think we're brilliant. slowly converting him, Dom. Yeah, <laughs> you're slowly uh, dissolving my resistance <laughs> to fruit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just rubbing pineapple on his with face with your with your pineapple juice of suggestions. <laughs> We've got to time these jokes carefully. <laughs> I thought Mr. I thought Adam was gonna <laughs> just spit his coffee everywhere there. No, I'm sorry, I'm not wasting coffee. We're okay. <laughs> oh dear. Right, and last one, uh Subway. Subway. Uh so foot long, Italian herbs and cheese, either meatball or spicy Italian. Yes. <laughs> Again, going meat heavy. <laughs> Does your wife listen to this? <laughs> the, occasionally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it's fine. She <laughs> <laughs> your name from now is going to be Adam. All the meats, meaty. Meat. All the meats. Yep. <laughs> In inverted commas. <laughs> Well, I already have a bit of a reputation around the taekwondo circuit for always being eating. Um, so, yeah. Although, although being a, like too heavy on the meats, maybe maybe not the best reputation. <laughs> I was going to say. So, I, I mean, th- th- for the for the listeners, that's how me and Adam know each other. Is um, Adam is one of the other co- We're one of the coaches now. You were the yeah, captain. Yeah. You're now the co- one of the coaches for yeah. um, our organization um, probably one of the hardest jobs in the world <laughs> with well, it's not it's not too bad yeah. we've not got too many uh, admin nightmares at the moment yeah that's true okay. most most people in the team now are, are fairly uh, organized and and can do their own admin <laughs> unless it's unless it's looking for travel insurance Dom <laughs> right, okay. so, I'm going to throw you under the bus on yeah, this one. Yeah, so Adam's just throwing me under the bus here. <laughs> right, I liked, I liked, uh, I liked Mr. Powell's response on that one. Um, oh, I've it's, not seen it's that. Called, one. It's called delegating. <laughs> so just to fill Jerry in, uh, so on the the stag do that we're going to in a in a couple of months, um, a question came into the WhatsApp that's been set up about uh, travel insurance. Do we go through the airline or, or get it separately? And uh, and Tom pipes in. It's like I, th- I think I've found a better deal going separately, but I've got my parents tasked with uh, <laughs> with doing the fine research to get yeah, me the best yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I booked my flight on. I must have booked it's it on enough. Thursday. I booked it on Thursday, mm-hmm. and then I phoned my mum at around about eleven o'clock on Thursday and went, I "Need a favour? What's that? Can you look at travel insurance for me?" <laughs> yeah, I've got nothing else I'm doing. <laughs> So as much as I'm ribbing you, when she does come back with the right, the kind of best idea, could you uh, share the information? Yeah, well, so I mean, I mean like full disclosure. So um, I, look, I, I went, I think I found this, but I'm not sure. You know, I think I found it for like nine quid for the trip, right? And it's three, three, three nights. Three nights? Uh, no, two nights. Out. Two nights. Yeah, fly out Saturday, come back Monday. And it's like nine quid, but... Um, there's a likelihood that, um, well, hopefully that um, myself and Adam will be at least going on two other trips abroad to um, to Holland and Slovenia this year, um, and I also have a trip to Germany. 
and my so my mum's like well i'll tell you what what i'll do is i'll give me all the dates and i'll calculate how much it would be to get them all separately and then calculate how much it would be to get cover for the year right sweet and that's why you delegate admin to parents <laughs> yeah it's like that's why i delegated admin to parents i'm just like <laughs> yeah it makes sense though if you yeah if you're gonna go yeah. to that many places doing the multi-trip hmm. that'll work yeah. Exactly. Um, and I, I was busy this week, as Terry is very well, much yeah. aware. And I was like, I need some help and it needs to be done fairly soon. It was kind of like, sh- let's just shift that from my mind so I'm not thinking about it. Um, yeah. I still somehow managed to book my flights and not screw that up. So, win for me. Well, <laughs> then there's still time to realise that you've messed up flights. I, I, I trust me, I like... I, I... So <clears throat> there is a notorious kind of um, uh, like reputation within within the taekwondo circuit, especially amongst our some of our fellow um, Puma members. And um, so I, I've booked the wrong flight before. <laughs> I, so everybody booked the return flight, and <clears throat> our co- our head coach turned around and said to us, "He went All right. So we've booked the eight o'clock flight home." So I booked the 8 p.m. flight home. Oh, no. And everyone else booked the 8 a.m. flight home. Oh, dumb. So <laughs> I travelled with them for the eight, to, the, to the airport at the, eight, at the 8 o'clock flight. And it wasn't until I got to security, they were like, you're a bit early. <laughs> Better to be safe than sorry. What, what trip yeah. was that? What that was Ireland. Hanging Ireland. That's not and a great hope. There's not much in that airport for 12 hours. No, and it was also the my... F- was it my... F- it was my first international gold. Woo-hoo, go me. Um, <laughs> I nearly got, I remember nearly being um, wiped out by one of one of our um, fellow ones on our teams because they mucked up the draws. I didn't even know I'd won at that point. I just kept winning through the rounds. And then eventually it was just like, just come up to me and goes, Dom! And just gave me a great big bear hug. And I was like, oh, so I did well then. <laughs> He's like, you won! <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm definitely. Anyway, so I had, I got pulled so I went to the check-in desk and was there early. Um, and they were like, you're up here a bit early. That's, <laughs> are you sure? And I was like, ah, oh, don't. So I ended up going into, um, <laughs> into the, uh, into the like security section. And they're normally like, they don't let you in for like, you know, uh, before three hours before the flight. But they pulled me up because the, the medal went off like in in the in the um thing and then they were you know asking about it they were they were lovely lovely security guards in in cork airport um and then they saw my ticket and was like we're not supposed to let you in i'd also like to point out i was so hung over i wanted to murder small children at this point <laughs> because it was also one of our it was someone else's 18th the day before and sort of like a tumbler like you get from asda or any other well-known supermarket not quite a full pint but kind of a tumbler the whole thing full of jaeger and he refused to do it and i was like understandable and i was like and then so our coach was like well someone needs to do it and i went i'll do that (laughs) dom goes full hero yeah it's one of the times i did go full hero yeah so i was very hungover but they let me in they let me in early there isn't a lot in cork airport i'll be totally honest um but eventually the uh, the Netherlands team came through, so I ended up playing um, uh, playing card games with them for for uh, for several hours well, before they got their <laughs> flight at like four p.m. and I still another four hours to hang around. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, well. But I got home. I got home eventually, and it's a, it's a it's an amusing story to tell. Yeah. Which I, I don't think I've told on that. Um, we can't tell uh, we can't tell Adam's uh, amusing story in Cork Airport because it involves more <laughs> racism. So we're not going to tell that on the podcast. <laughs> we'll tell you that one afterwards, Jerry. <laughs> it's not mild racism. That makes it sound a lot worse than it actually is. <laughs> you threw me under the bus first. I, I, I decided to, to throw in a bit of a some a celebrity catchphrase at the wrong time when a pub went quiet. Um, <laughs> And in Cork, they ended up like having a lot of eyes turn on me, so I, I hid. <laughs> yeah. It always happens, though. It's always the way, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. You you could have heard a pin drop. It went that quiet. 
Did the piano player in the corner stop as well? And the, yeah, record uh, scratch. It was every, yeah. everything. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Record scratch, piano yeah. played. I'm pretty Head sure. snapping like, round. <laughs> you, could feel, you could feel the tension in the air. You could cut it with a cricket stump. <laughs> <laughs> right, before we get ourselves into trouble, um, we're going to move on to poignant questions. Um, we only have six uh, this month. Um, cut it down a little bit because we've got some more interesting ones and I have like a few squirreled away secret bits which I think would be quite interesting to to address um, so yeah and they're not quite our traditional an item what do you think so this could be this could be weird this could get weird <laughs> it's very weird and I'm really looking forward to it so first one this is from yourself Adam um, it is do you put on sock, sock, shoe, shoe, or sock, shoe, sock, shoe, and does that de- change depending on the location? Go on, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I put my shoes on first, <laughs> and then uh, using a spatula, <laughs> I forced the sock between the, in the gap between the shoe and the foot. And then I put the socks on that way. <laughs> and I always start Inventive. with the right foot. You must have a lot of time in the morning just to be able to do that. <laughs> I get up especially early. <laughs> <laughs> just so that I can do that. This and poor... Socks socks. <laughs> Larry sat there with his legs crossed going, Please, Dad, take me out. <laughs> I just want to walk. <laughs> Larry being Jerry's golden retriever, by the way. Larry! <laughs> Do you there with a spatula, some tongs, just... <laughs> Fish slice. It takes me anywhere, <laughs> exactly. It takes me anywhere between 18 and 27 minutes. It's not too bad. Well, and do you do that in public as well? Um, yes. <laughs> No, I would ask Jerry, what, you know, if it would change depending on if you're at the gym. But I imagine it, I can't remember that you said the last time you went to the gym. Yeah. Um, so let's wind the clock back thirty years. <laughs> I would have done it then. <laughs> In the one occasion when I went to the gym. <laughs> oh dear. No, it's definitely sock sock then shoe shoe. Hundred percent. Even do you, do you actually want a serious answer from me, by the way? Well, I mean, it could be. It's an interesting one. I've got way. I can go way deeper into this, <laughs> right? So it's sock, 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 shoe, shoe. Well, why, why would you? It's a bit weird to put on a sock and then a shoe whilst your other foot's still bare. So I, I normally go sock, sock, shoe, shoe. But I found myself at the gym. I realised that actually, because it's like public changing rooms and stuff, I've, I've cleaned and dried off one foot, and I go right sock, shoe. And then I do the other one and go sock shoe. And I was like, huh. I, I don't. It's to, to avo- so it's to avoid basically putting socks on like potentially wet floor. Which I get, but I don't. I will stand on my towel. Uh, right? Yeah, and I'm going to put my towel on the floor. The reason why I ask is because... <laughs> Do you, because, because how do you, how you, because I have to put my socks on before I put my trousers on. Uh, no, I, no, I get trousers, trousers first, then socks. Oh, no, because then you get your toes caught on the, on yeah. the inside seams of jeans and stuff like that. And it makes me cringe. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Dom on this. You've got to do socks first, then put your trousers on. No, no, trousers first, keep the legs warm. <laughs> then you can go, then you can have a good little sit down, put your shoes and socks on. <laughs> it's just I'm flab- no no I can't I can't do it oh. I do not remember the last time I put because I mean like you can you can go for like all all stages of like clothes like is there a specific order to putting clothes on so it's like you know boxes first then is it socks or is it a t-shirt Boxers, trousers, t-shirt, socks. Oh, no. 
Boxers, boxers, t-shirt, socks, socks trousers. trousers. Yes. Ah, you're both weird. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> there's no conspiracy here either, by the way. No, this Adam, is just, just you, the... you've conferred. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually haven't. No, we actually haven't. Does it change oh. depending on? And it that, that doesn't change when I'm at the gym. Um, but I am a person that will have a towel around me before I put, and I put the boxes on underneath the towel, which just seems to be clearly, and you have to let us know, Jerry, when you get to that age, but clearly at a certain age, men just like to walk around completely bollock naked, um, and they like to have conversations with each other while completely naked, which I do not understand. We'll go, we're going to have Dom rant number one. Why? Why? And then it gets even worse. They'll then use the hair dryers to dry a certain part of the male anatomy, which I just, what is wrong with these people? Like, wh when does it become socially acceptable to do <laughs> <Never>. that? <laughs> socially acceptable, never. Never. Uh, yeah. Personally acceptable. Uh, but, but, yeah, but, 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 I'm about I, a year I had off. that for... <laughs> I had that for the first time uh, last week or the week before walked into the changing rooms and there was a guy by the hairdryers hairdryers um, yeah full birthday suit just <laughs> doing his hair I don't think he had a towel anywhere near him and the the hairdryers aren't actually anywhere near the lockers and the benches for, for getting changed there's a, there's a little walk between the two Yeah, no, wow. it wasn't, wasn't pleasant. <laughs> no, no, very much not wow. <laughs> <It's>, uh. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and I don't know whether it's because I'm a particularly... I think we've had similar discussions before, whether I'm particularly prude or... Uh, you can say well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I, I haven't had a girlfriend for 10 years, so fortunately there's not many people that can tell, that can tell you that, which is very good. So, um, try Bob Dom. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not because this could get worse. But, but it's what happens. What happens in Taekwondo stays in Taekwondo. So I'm not. I thought that was Spain, <laughs> Vegas. Now there it's are certain, anywhere. There are certain things that happens in the in in the Taekwondo men's chat what? that stays in the Taekwondo men's I chat. Did. And I, I think part of that comes down to essentially mutually assured destruction. <laughs> yeah. So, there's enough ammunition floating about on everyone's shoulders that, that <laughs> no. But I want to know how far this veil of secrecy goes. You know, what happens in the local co-op stays in the local co-op. What's going to happen to the local co-op? I don't know, but whatever happens there. <laughs> normally, there. normally the replacement phrase is what happens in Vegas goes on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm happens just, on WhatsApp stays on WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's not the best way to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or get shared into lots of other group chats. <laughs> yeah. If, if Mark two. Zuckerberg's got anything to do with it. Yeah, I've completely oh, yeah. forgotten the point that I was originally going to make. That's brilliant. That's, a, that's <laughs> maybe that's Mark's Mark Zuckerberg's <laughs> new strapline. What happens on Facebook stays on Facebook forever, <laughs> <laughs> and you can never get rid of it. <laughs> so there. Or meta, or whatever it's called meta. now, isn't it? Metaverse. I've had that discussion before. See, if Adam, if Adam was working for the marketing company, that had, he had to come up with the. <laughs> but we we need to rebrand Facebook. We were thinking Meta, and Adam would just like move the A across and just, <laughs> just squeeze that in between the E and the T. How about meat? Meat. <laughs> Why? <coughs> I just love meat. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's it's a nice little pun because it's all about that being sociable, but but we're going to still like the Beatles. They've they've they changed it, brought the A in instead of the second D. What what my my concern is is we were talking about me being well endowed, and we've gone back to meat. So <laughs> I'm too much. I was worried about this podcast being too serious with all the words gone, but it's clearly not. Clearly not. <laughs> I don't know whether to apologise to our <laughs> listeners or not. We're very crude gentlemen, but hey-ho. I think, I think the world needs a bit of joviality at the moment, so... 
So why not? And meat. <laughs> <laughs> Ju- some juvenile <laughs> joviality. That's what we've got going on here. And distinct and juvenile. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Right. Because I've completely forgotten my point, but it was something along the lines of I'm very prude, I, you know, I don't, I just can't see, yeah, hair dryers using the not, not thing, not a thing. Question two on our poignant questions. Um, we've had this about the liquid coming out of the fingers before, which I thought was a genius question. Mm-hmm. Uh, hats off to uh, Samwise who came up for that one. But the que- more bit was, why didn't we consider petrol? Which I think is very poignant at the moment, considering the the price of you know that'd be like having liquid gold coming out of your fingers. I'd yeah. imagine at this moment. E five, I'm think... assuming. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, it's got to be selectable. You've got to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> you just carry a wristwatch that you just kind yeah, of yeah. click. Yeah, it's a bit like a bit like Spider Man's web shooters. You know, like, no, nope, no, nope, we'll go diesel today. There we go. <laughs> what about Mister Han? Mister Han from from Enter the Dragon. He had an interchangeable hand, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, too many attachments. You just just need a, a little... <laughs> just a, just a, just a, like, almost like a wristwatch that you kind of clip yeah. around. I see it with a, an inspector gadget, kind of the, the fingertip just lifts off. So you can... <laughs> <laughs> Go-go gadget with petrol engine. gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would have made your trip to Brighton much easier, Jerry. Yeah, it would have done. <laughs> I'd have just yeah. called Adam and said, "Listen, Adam, I'm <laughs> fancy a trip that. to Brighton." Yeah, yeah. fancy a trip I to Brighton. I could borrow your finger. Not... <laughs> yeah. That's a definite phrasing. <laughs> that is, uh, this could escalate quite quickly. As, as, as we did. If this wasn't being recorded, I'd, I'd probably make some other follow-ups. But. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. deep, deep rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. This one. I don't want to make more work for Dom having to uh, edit and mute stuff too much. I, I don't. Do you know? What, I, I, we yeah. were talking. I was thinking about this earlier, and I was, I was listening to a podcast, and three quarters of the way through the podcast, one of them just goes, "Right, I'm going to have a wee," and just gets up and goes, and then they just leave it in. At least. <laughs> <laughs> At least when we had a break, I think it was a water break for one of ours. I did cut it out and I managed to get it quite smooth. And I've only had to do one bleep and then Jerry went full Hagrid mode. <laughs> I should not have done that. <laughs> which which definitely made me made me laugh. Um, I just actually thought I'd look at my notes since I've just kind of ad-libbed everything. Um, what would happen if, he's, if he went for a leak and then decided right the last second he needs to go for a Monday Duke? In the meantime... The podcast is still recording, <laughs> and the other guy's what? just sitting. He's sitting on the throne, reading <laughs> through the Daily Mail. <laughs> yeah, one guy just filling dead air, just going, "Come on, how long is he gonna be? <laughs> What's he doing, Wordle? What's he doing?" <laughs> I got today's Wordle. <laughs> so did I. It wasn't easy. Can't remember what it was. I tried every vowel, <laughs> <laughs> and none of them were in there. Like Oakley, oh yes, I know what it was. Yes, because yeah. it had two double letters this this yeah. week. Two yeah, double letters. Not this easy. Week. Um, but I I got away with it. We've completely gone off track. Welcome to the podcast, Adam. Um, <laughs> um, I thought the first word that I used was audio, so one of the eyes was in the correct place. By the time this goes out, we won't be able to do it. <laughs> so I, I I was like words that have like three letters i and then end yeah exactly uh, so the next one i went for i didn't even bother trying the rest of the vowels i went for um civil was next oh, which then got me the one. other i and the v so then it was just trying to get the uh, you know the l and the, the c were the only ones that were wrong and then you start going well that clearly leaves I tried livid, and then all but the L and vivid was the next one. So yeah, lived livid was my before I got vivid. I put livid. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, those. Yeah, that was a complete distraction from 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 that. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I would I did just write that I I have to admit like in, it would be really good to have petrol coming out of your fingers if uh in, like, 
you know, 20 years time when we all drive in electric cars, it's going to be that classic car ownership. Um, yeah. And I still dream of owning a 1969 uh, Ford Mustang. It won't happen, but I would love one. <laughs> I'm determined to get one. There we go. That's the Christmas present. Try and find a little matchbox one. Yeah. You or are... a Lego, Lego one. Usually. I'm afraid to say that you are behind. Oh, has someone already done that? Yes. The, ah. the, uh, you probably could guess we, we who. We get you a fleet of them. <laughs> you probably guess who as well, actually. Would it have been a previous guest? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That narrows it down. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it was. Uh, it was Laura. Yeah, she was very yeah. quick-witted. Yeah. I suppose is the yeah. term. Question three. I love this question. This question is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to kill <laughs> off you two. How do you grate cheese? Do you grate on the fl- <laughs> edge, the flat <laughs> side? <laughs> like, so I mean, like, so it's a, it's a cuboid, so none of none of the sides are the same length. So you have like, do you have it so the longest side is at the top, and you're you're grating on like uh, the sm- almost the smallest face? Do you have it so that the short side is at the top, so you're on the long thin face, or do you have it so you're Flat, the, the, the big flat side grating against the grater. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to see someone try and grate that way. Like, who who grates the face of a block of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it it can only ever be the short side, right? This is the small side or a corner. You know, if oh, you got, okay. If you, got, if you if you're starting off with like a fresh bit of block of cheese the corner so that it doesn't kind of break in half is, is the way to go but... <laughs> yeah but you might only have to if you grate the face of the cheese you might only need to grate it once <laughs> then you've got all the cheese also, you need how big is your grater that you can grate the face of a block of cheese it's about the size of an A4 sheet of paper <laughs> It's, it's well, like it, all right. In, in that case, the face is the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably pushing it with both hands. It's... I get somebody to hold the grater <laughs> whilst I just <laughs> kind of lean forward. It's almost like, like, like washboard it. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like washboarding it, like they used to do in the old, the old days. I've just got the cheese. <laughs> oh crap! This one's gone in the sink. <laughs> So the photo of this, the photoshopped photo of a uh, playground slide that yes. goes into a cheese grater. That's, yes. that's what you've got in your back garden, Jerry. It? it is. I just let it slide down from the top. It doesn't the gravity sit do face work. first. <laughs> you sit on it, so the face yeah. is down. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I am assuming that you all, you two are sensible cheese graters. Yes. Yes. I, I yes. did have a think, and I do have like some extended questions on this, just because I think it's such a great, like, strange topic, and it's exactly what I wanted the podcast to be about, was to talk about. It's, it's <laughs> right. a great question. Um, do you, if you needed X grams of cheese, do you grate until you got x grams of cheese in the bowl or do you cut off x amount and then just grate that bit until you shred your fingers great without chopping you just any bit. you just feel it in your soul you just start <laughs> grating and then grate some more and then a little bit more and then when you think you've got it got enough a little bit more just to be sure <laughs> This is coming from the personal trainer here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Listeners>. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's good for pop. you. It's got, got calcium, to <laughs> strong health, strong teeth and bones. <laughs> Go for the reduced fat stuff. You, you'll be fine. It's a bit like garlic when you're cooking. You just... <laughs> I love the double contingency. Garlic when you're cooking yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't let any recipe tell you how much garlic to use. Just just feel it in your soul, <laughs> and always go a little bit more just in case. <laughs> Well, at least we know you're not a vampire or lactose intolerant. <laughs> and I'm, I'm waiting for my wife to hear this episode uh, because 
I I follow recipes to the letter when I'm cooking. So so she will come and tell me that she doesn't believe a word of what I've just said. <laughs> oh dear. All right, I I do know that you are the you are the chef in your house. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, you need to write a cookbook called <laughs> Feel It in Your Soul. <laughs> you don't subtitle, have any measurements Subtitle, for all the meats. <laughs> <laughs> With no quantities. <laughs> yeah. Just feel it in your soul. Just, all the meats. A bit of this, a bit of that, lots of that. <laughs> you know it's right when you've got the meat or cheese sweats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, so that's a no to cutting a bit of the cheese off. Oh, oh my god. god. Um, it depends how it depends how big a block of cheese you've got. Yeah, you've got I mean a, if you've got a really big block of cheese and you just need a little bit, cut it off and then start grating. I mean, like the reason why I ask is because I don't do that at all. Purely because when you've got a little bit of cheese left, trying to grate cheese when ev- like every third like grate is just going to take half your thumb off. It's just like, yeah, I don't particularly want like Dom's thumb in the middle of my you know pasta or whatever I'm putting. That's, what, that's why you cut off more than you need. Great, great. Then what you do need, and then you just eat the rest of it <laughs> while, you, while you're cooking. Just eat the slab of cheese. Wait, have you ever used a mandolin? while no. you're cooking so oh those things are lethal Mandolin. so it's, so oh, it's, it's like um just one one like sharp blade sounds like um, a, um, a bit a bit Star like a, a kind of single cheese grater um but it's how you do kind of like potato dauphinois and you get like wafer thin slices of whatever you <laughs> whatever you're cutting uh first time i used one it comes with like a a kind of a finger guard that you kind of stab into the food to get those final oh, slices yeah. and i was like I don't need to use that. I've got good control, and I'm you know, going through the the first potato, and I'm like, "Hmm, that stings." <laughs> oh, I've almost taken off the tip of my finger. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a it's such a clean cut as well. It's yeah, they they are really good for nice thin slices of of uh, foodstuffs and I'm fingers. Could you could you use a mat because because it's effectively like those uh, you see them on like um, JVC and all those crappy kind of t- uh, like shopping channels they're always on there that you can you know you stab it in and you do that. I suppose you could probably excuse yeah. me use cheese on those if you wanted to slice cheese that oh, way. Oh yes, yeah. I know what you you're probably could. About I don't that. know if it'd slide well enough though. Probably depends on the type of cheese. Mm. Adam, can I can I just point something out here? So I googled on my phone mandolin slicer. Yeah. And you've got pictures of people not only using the the finger guard but they're also wearing steel chain gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just giving it the old Yeah, yeah I've got control. <laughs> just I think yeah. you've got that confused with the Mandalorian which I was, is, <laughs> which I, was is just, a... I was just I was feeling it in my soul and my soul yeah. let me down that day. <laughs> More, more. <laughs> Good lord! Oh my god, nice. Um, yeah. uh, what else does I have written down? Because um, I, I like cheese. <laughs> Best form of cheese: grated, sliced, melted. <laughs> <laughs> We've Deep lost fried. Time. <laughs> Deep fried. <laughs> Again, coming, coming from the guy who's fully working in the health and fitness industry at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. If, you, if you're going to treat yourself, treat yourself. <laughs> so wait one second. So, are you talking? What if you had to get a slab of meat, wrap the cheese up in the slab of meat, cover that in batter, then deep fry it? <laughs> oh, it's so like. Not, not fully deep fried, but like breaded, fried breaded cheese. You like mozzarella sticks, sort of thing. <laughs> Jerry's got a new standing desk, oh, listeners, oh and he's God. the problem is, is he can wander around more. And he's we we may have broken <laughs> Jerry on this podcast. Oh, Honestly, that's the class. <laughs> 
Even I'm not suggesting things like deep fried cheese for Adam's coming up with that. I'm feeling a whole lot better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I might need to get my arteries checked out. <laughs> I think you need to change your relationship with food. <laughs> Probably. You need to think less with your soul. Yeah. <laughs> what should he think more of with? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> well, yeah, whoa. Yeah, whoa. Oh yeah. my god. We were, everyone that listens to this podcast is going to think that we're all ridiculous, more so than we currently already are. <laughs> let's let's not go. Let's let's loose move on to the next. Yep. Uh, all all credibility lost. <laughs> <laughs> we never I never had any in the first place. I'm happy to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Question 4. How do you cut a sandwich? <laughs> I love this question. I have to admit, I really like this question again because I think it's it's it, it it does produce some interesting results. Best way to cut a sandwich. Go on, Jerry. Oh, it's easy for me. Not diagonally. Not Just diagonally. To, not diagonally. It completely taste, oh. changes the taste. Yeah, for the better. No, no. So if you make a ham sandwich and you cut it diagonally, it'll taste like a cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much it changes the flavour um, you go oh, I'm looking forward to this ham sandwich and then you bite into it and go that's coronation chicken <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have cut that diagonally damn it I'm the opposite it's got to always be diagonally uh, don't cut it Ooh. Ooh. just just yeah feel it in your soul <laughs> Wasting wasting your time cutting it. Just just pick it up and and start eating. I have a question for you, Adam. When you go to Subway, when you order a foot long, you say, "Don't cut it." <laughs> foot long. Don't cut it in half. <laughs> no, that's, I mean that's someone else cutting it. I I let them do what they need to do. Don't want to confuse them. Okay, what if you had this kind of money that Snoop Dogg had? So you know, like Snoop Dogg, he pays somebody fifty grand a year to roll his blunts. <laughs> Would you pay somebody like 50 grand a year to cut your sandwiches? If I was paying someone. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I quite like just having the, the the full sandwich. I think the only time I ever do that is if I've got an egg and bacon sandwich. Because if you cut into the, into the oh, egg... Or you don't remember cutting the egg. Yeah, it goes yeah. everywhere and you lose, half your, you lose half the best bit. I agree. Yeah. So uh, that I can get on board with. I I find the best way actually the the best way, you make a sandwich mm. and then you thinly slice it with a mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> Great it top with a slice of pineapple <laughs> and a deep fry it. Deep fry it. Cut it with a mandolin. I'd, we've got some recipes for your book, though, Adam. At least, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. this is writing itself. Yeah. I'm glad this is recorded, Dom. Can you <laughs> can you do like a speech to text thing, and then that's going to take off all the hard work for me? Yeah, it does. It does it automatically when I upload it. When we upload it later, I'll I'll sort out the subtitles for the the main podcast. <laughs> Trust me, I don't sit there for. The, I'll, I'll the give you both a credit it for the uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you both a credit in the book excellent I want to be Thanks. in the acknowledgements I think do you know I would think that's yeah. like a that's like a secret internal dream of mine if I'm in the acknowledgements of a book this book is you know dedicated to if I'm in that I've made it in life that's it I, I, like I could die happy from that point <laughs> even if even if feel it in your soul cookbook only sells about four copies yeah but I'm in an acknowledgement and I would have bought three of them, by the way. <laughs> it's something yeah. like that advert. Do you remember that he says, oh, do you have fly fishing <laughs> by, <laughs> by J.R. Hartley? Yeah. I don't know if you'll remember that. I might, this, <laughs> this is going to divide the audience. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to show your age, Jerry. Do you, do you um, have <laughs> feel it in your soul <laughs> by a sweat? <laughs> You do? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> My name? Yes. <laughs> I wanna bu I'll buy all of them. <laughs> My name? Yes, it's Ace Wayne. 
<laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Dom, Dom's broken, but I don't think he knows of that <laughs> advert. <laughs> I don't know that advert. I'm, I'm just broken because of Jerry. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to... He does this podcast for his own amusement, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me, me and Jerry, the first time we recorded this, and this is just, you know, background for the for the listeners as well, we we just decided, look, if we get, like, two hours where it's just me and Jerry chatting complete... <laughs> God shot. <laughs> God's wallop. <laughs> right? Then so be it. If nobody listens to it, then so be it. You've had a good chat with a friend. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's the that's the best way to. I mean, uh, not, we we normally book a work call every week. It's only in for half an hour, but it's quite often like oh, I should really go to my next meeting. <laughs> Ten minutes into it, oh. <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Been late to many a meeting. <laughs> should probably move that to like eleven thirty so we can go to lunch. Yeah, an hour and a half. Or we'll just block it out for longer. Oh god, that would be dangerous. <laughs> like five days. <laughs> to be fair, it's probably the most productive that we've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Right. Question five. Which way around does the toilet roll go? I mean, deathly silence is probably we've all got the same this answer. This is easy. I'm just waiting. <laughs> okay. This yeah. is easy. It's it's, it's got to go over. There's Thank you. That's that's the way it's done. Yep. I mean, even even the patent for the toilet roll holder says it goes over. <laughs> really? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We've now been well, educational. I have heard. There's yeah yeah. There, there is one valid exception I have heard on this of, of why you may want to go the other way around. Uh, and if it's if you've got cats or other pets that are going to attack the toilet roll, then if you go if you go under, it doesn't fully unravel and you don't end up with mummified pets. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I'd, I'd say keep the pets out of the bathroom and put the toilet roll the right way around. Can I just say, can I just say, this is, oh, I don't know what happened to my voice there. Uh, might have to beat that bit out. Can no, I just say, <laughs> um, every time you put toilet roll on a holder, when it's not over, so it's underneath, Chuck Norris punches a small kitten in the face. <laughs> Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> No, I'm a dog person, so eh. <laughs> All right, small puppy. You know, Chuck, Nor- Chuck oh, Norris right, is okay, fast. <laughs> he needs to make the point. <clears throat> I have a bit of a trick because I don't have like a traditional toilet roll holder, like that's on the wall that you have to Should like just going sideways. Well, no, it's just, I just have like a... Dot Dom drills through the middle of the roll. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you tear off each sheet and then bind it? And then tear out pages? Just stacks them work. one on top of the other. No, 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 you put it in like a tissue box so you can kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Fancy. It's much... <laughs> Well, if you if you use actual tissues, which are softer, it's much nicer for your ass, isn't it? I suppose. Do you, do you stitch? Do you tear off all the sheets and stitch them all back together so it's like a massive duvet? <laughs> and then lay it out on the floor, and then you literally just rub your ass along it. Like what, like a dog? A dog? <laughs> no, and it's got worms. Oh. Dom, I am never coming to your flat. <laughs> Is that what you do, Dom? <laughs> I 
Although, Jerry, you came up with that idea far too quickly. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I actually worried myself then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Completely unplanned. That's the beauty of this podcast. Do, and the do, do you tear kit. off the sheets, <laughs> stick them together. <laughs> it's like a massive flag. Pin that to the wall, and then twerk <laughs> <laughs> against the wall. <laughs> what? Idea. What is your daughter going to think if she listens to this podcast? I today? honestly don't know. <laughs> I hope, I hope that she can hear you from the room that you're currently in and the first thing that she asks when you get out of the room is what were you talking about twerking dad <laughs> <laughs> I've just broken Jerry completely now <laughs> I love the way that She's just getting one third of the conversation as well brilliant <laughs> yeah <laughs> I've got to maintain composure here. Right. <laughs> okay. Are you with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Shall I move on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shall I move on, Adam? <laughs> yeah. Um, question six and the last one of our poignant questions. What is the best Disney film? And there, there was an insert from somebody that gave me this question. And why is it Mulan? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a leading question. I know, I was a bit like, hang on a minute. <laughs> Let's just go which side of the fence they sit on then. <laughs> yeah. Damn this person. Um, I mean... I, I, Mulan is a good, is is pretty high up there. To be fair, I, mean, I can't argue with it. That's yeah. the unfortunate thing. It's really annoying. It's a leading question, yeah. but it's not yeah. it's not necessarily wrong. It's not it's not a bad shout. the The live action remake isn't too bad either. I haven't seen it yet. So, oh, so yeah, it's it's not too bad. It misses the comedy elements in some some areas, but mm. but. In so far as a lot of uh, live action remakes go, it's not a bad one. Okay. I'll have um, to consider watching it. But but for me, best is Disney film, Lion King. Yeah, I'd have a funny feeling that, you, that people would say that. Jerry? Yeah. You're Googling Disney I, films, I, aren't you? I am, actually, because so <laughs> I couldn't even make any notes on this, to be fair, because I just don't really watch Disney movies. But if it is a Disney movie, I'll vote Cars. Oh, Cars a Disney movie? Yeah, it's a little left field choice. Yeah. Oh, Two thousand six. Yeah. I think I know what you're going to do. Which one do you think I'm going to go for? Wally. Mmm, Wally is up there. My two favourite are probably Wally and um, I like Treasure Planet as well, which is a bit of a left field choice. But that's purely because it's a, mm. it's one of the most quotable ones. Damn it, Jim, I'm not a doctor. Well, I am a doctor, but I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> and then I, every now and then I get in my head, stuck in my head, the uh, the little robot from it. And he goes, spider psycho, um, which I just, yeah, great. Absolutely great. But yeah, Wally, Wally is probably the most, uh, I think is the the most beautiful Disney film, if there's such a thing. But yeah, Wally, definitely, 100%. Is Wally. Spirited Away a Disney film? Yeah. That's coming up on the list. Uh, Spirit was Disney. It's Studio Gib uh, Ghibli, but this was when Studio Ghibli was owned by Disney. Was so, owned by Disney. It's not anymore. I don't know if they're still owned by Disney. Mm. No, no, they're not. 2014, they, they stopped being owned by Disney. Um, okay. So Howl's Moving Castle is technically a Disney film as well. Um, Ponyo. Um, I've not seen Tales from Earthsea or The Secret World of um, Areti. Um, the, the, I mean, like, it, I, it's really difficult to compare and say that a Studio Good, Ghibli film is a Disney film because it just isn't. It's so different. It isn't, is it? Yeah. No. And so the best Studio Gib, Ghibli field, I, Ghibli film is um, is uh, Princess Mononoke, a hundred percent. I haven't seen that. Oh, that one's so good. I What's really like Porco that. Porco Rosso. Porco Rosso is another good one. Quite like that. Hmm. Yeah. 
I mean, have you seen any... Adam, have you seen any um, Studio Ghibli films? No. No. Or at least not not consciously. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'll, I'll have to take a list of recommend. Well, yeah, I may have seen one without realising that it's Studio Ghibli. Oh, I see. So I'll have to take a, a list of recommendations from Dom. Yeah, because it's about one. Of, it's it's one of the few. Fi- it's one of the few films, Jerry, that I've actually seen. Since I haven't seen anything else, as you lot have at- ascertained. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, most of most people will have kind of seen or heard of things like Spirited Away and um, is it How's Moving Castle? Uh, no, Spirited Away and as soon as I see it, I will know it. Um, yeah, Princess Mononoko. Um, oh God, which one is it? Do you want to know what the number one is? <clears throat> number one Disney film, according to Good oh, Housekeeping, is Beauty and the Beast. Oh, interesting. Number two is The Lion King. Mm. Number three, The Little Mermaid. Ah, uh, Little Mermaid is overrated. Number four, Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Number five, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The first one. Oh my God! What year do you think that was made? Fifty-three, isn't it? Thirty-seven. Oh, okay. Nineteen thirty-seven. That's insane. That's pre-World War. Yep. Yeah. In nineteen thirty-nine mm. is when the Second World War started. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I like Alice in Wonderland. I, yeah, Alice in Wonderland is a good one as well. That's yes. good. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. What year do you think that was? I've got it up in front, so it's cheating. But I'll, I'll let Adam <laughs> guess. Oh, it's going to be ridiculously early as well. Okay, forties. Not quite. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Still 51. a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, but, so I mean like I suppose it's interesting that we started discussing some good films because I've actually put down what's the worst Disney film anyone brave enough to say what they think the worst Disney film is I don't think I'm in a position to comment really I really haven't seen many Disney films no I mean I'm having a, a quick look. I mean, there's plenty that I've never heard of. I love the kind of modern ones. Yeah. Yeah, I still need to see uh, Encanto, like uh, Luca, and Soul, but they were all supposedly really, really good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of planes. It felt like a bit of a cop out, like it felt like it ought to have been done because you had cars. I tried to just capitalise and I didn't enjoy planes that much. Mm. Um, and they still made a sequel somehow. There was a few, I What's, suppose, around what? the mid-2000s that were a bit dodgy. Watch Disney movies. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of doing this on the internet. Yeah. Follow your soul. Oh. Hunchback of Notre Dame. That's a great movie. What are you on about? Um, yeah. I don't know. And they've got The Lion King second in that list. What? So it's, it's in one list it's the second best, in another it's the second worst. <laughs> Consistency, people. Consistency. Consistency. Oh, oh well. Oh well. Definitely some good, uh, um, some good Disney movies. Should we move on from Disney movies? We shall. Uh, we should do yeah. that. We're, we're listeners. We're going to end um, kind of the pointed questions there because we've had some. We had some weird ones. Um, 
which I'm sure. And um, the, our conspiracy theories are, is a little bit different. It might also eventually be a little bit derisive. I think all three of us potentially could be murdered by all of the teachers that we know at the end of this. So uh, we'll pre-warn you now. <laughs> we shall I think I'm, I'll be first to go. You're married Living to a with teacher. A teacher. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so our conspiracy theory this month... Adam has brought along an absolutely brilliant website. I think it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And it allows for like mini conspiracy theories. Um, and this is called uh, Spurious Correlations. Um, so things that, uh, that correlate that probably really shouldn't. Um, so the first one, so we've got a collection of three and then we have a bit of a bonus. Um, so we will discuss each one in turn and and probably end up uh, in some rabbit hole somewhere. Um, but so question of the first one we have is the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlates with films Nicolas Cage appears in. <laughs> I don't know if I can make this picture bigger Just, so I can, I can actually read it. So it's a, a nice little graph from 1999 to 2009 and they match far too well. Um, I think I can't remember whether um, I uh, I came across this website when I was doing my A levels or my degree, but it was basically in, like in stats proving that uh, correlation and causation are not one in the same, <laughs> and that they kind of bring up graphs like this, and it's like, so the more films that Nicolas Cage stars in the more people drown by falling into a pool <laughs> so so by <laughs> essentially by uh, by making Nicolas Cage a successful actor and seeing his films are you tangentially responsible for increasing the number of pool drownings goes back to the if you put the toilet roll <laughs> and linking that to Chuck Norris kicking a kitten slash puppy I mean, to be fair, Nicolas Cage is a terrible actor, so the more films it appears in, the more likely I'm going to want to commit suicide by drowning myself in a pool. But that's about the only <laughs> correlation I can find there. <clears throat> oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm so just to read out the graph for, for the listeners, uh, 1999, there were... I, hang on, I've got to remember which line is which. Um, there were 110 drownings sort of say um, and Nicolas yeah. Cage appears in two films 2,105 two films 2,001 105 uh, and two films uh, 2002 110 uh, no sorry three films and uh, just under 100 drownings uh, two, so that's probably the biggest split I think actually it goes up for um, yeah. uh, for Nicolas Cage and down for drownings uh, 2003 so looks like oh, it starts at 80 so it's a little bit spurious there but it's probably 85 <laughs> drownings and Nicolas Cage like in one film I like the way you're explaining I like the way you go yeah that's a bit spurious <laughs> yeah it's a bit the whole bloody thing's spurious <laughs> oh yeah it's, it's definitely kind of graph and data manipulation yeah, to yeah, make yeah. these Love curves it. fit but but the trend of uh, you know they're typically 2003 both dip and then they kind of steadily climb uh, through to 2007 with a height of 120 people drowning and, and four films of Nicolas Cage both drop off in 2008 and start to climb again in 2009 so this has got a 66.6% .6 correlation <laughs> which is pretty high when you think about it yeah it's yeah. massively high that's that, that's that's ridiculously high in. Um, so um, do we stop Nicolas Cage appearing in any films so nobody drowns in swimming pools well, whatever the reason is I don't <laughs> think you need to go, go any further than do we need to stop, stop Nicolas, Nicolas Cage, Cage being in films, films. or does it go the, or, or is it the, the causation the other way oh. does Nicolas Cage Ooh. celebrate people drowning in pools by stopping <laughs> in films <laughs> It's been a good year this year. <laughs> 150 of the f 
They've drowned. <laughs> Call my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for a film. <laughs> no, I don't care how shit it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do Ghost Rider 5. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's true. The the coronation could work both ways here. Um, interestingly, I, I suppose the only thing to really debunk this is movies take longer than one year to make. Generally, Not necessarily. I mean, I mean the quality of some of Nicolas Cage's movies. Some of them probably could have been made in about three week. weeks. <laughs> but yeah. I, su- I, su- I suppose the the main thing from from me for it is. Um, like, uh, it would is it actually out of sync a little bit? You know, some of the some of the the films that Nicolas Cage are in, that he would have started filming them before then. And it only goes yeah. up to two thousand and nine. So, who knows what that is like on twenty twenty one with the twenty twenty two? Sorry, with the with the with the pandemic. So, uh, yeah, but that's probably the only well I was about to say that's the only ooga boogie onto the that's onto the only issue you have with this I, I with this graph it's just obviously a spurious <laughs> correlation and that's why it makes it so good so um, yeah what, what can you do what can you do I think the, the correlation in the next one is so much stronger though I, I mean the correlation I mean, that, in the next one I think could be a could be a thing it's it's spookily close yeah so it's um, per capita cheese consumption correlates with number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. Let's let's discuss the how do you die by becoming tangled <laughs> in your bed sheets? That's the first thing I want to question. Right, nothing else. Yeah, I don't know. You you've got to be doing it very wrong. The, like the only <laughs> way that, that the only way that can be pl- that can happen. So I I do have one theory on this. Whenever you go to a hotel, they seem to manage to tuck the bed sheets in, or the you know the yeah the sheets or the quilt in, literally tougher than fighting Chuck Norris while in a volcano, right? It, it's it's not humanly possible to extract the bed sheets from under the mattress. That and I could understand if that kills you. Right, that that makes sense. Like hotels with their sheets, like that, that makes sense. What are you saying? If you don't get check, if you don't check out of your hotel room in time, the cleaning <laughs> ladies come around and just wedge you in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever their secret is. You've not settled your bill. Sorry. <laughs> you want to get your way out of that? Fight Chuck Norris in a volcano. I, I can't Although- see how. Sorry, I, I think more more worrying than just that is actually the scale on this graph. That from two thousand to two thousand and nine, the lowest number of people died becoming tangled in their bedsheets is just a smidge under four hundred <laughs> in a year. Yeah. When you compare that to like yes. uh, people drowning in a pool, yes, I would expect you know maybe you know, one hundred and twenty drownings or whatever i think yeah. most of these are to do with um the uh w- in america but like 400 people are... dying being tangled in their bed sheets it... it goes over 800 as well so you're looking at eight times as many people are dying changing their bedding than drowning in swimming pools <laughs> Your brain looks like it hurts, Joey. I think, it is I think these are the people who grate the uh, the face of the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> With a mandolin. <laughs> no finger guards. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so. This is this is why I think it could be correlated. We've already made we made the joke about the cheese, but as more cheese is consumed, although the scales a bit. Like if you actually look at the scale, it's like the difference between twenty nine pounds and thirty three pounds. It's four pounds different, right? Yeah. So th- there's a there's an article in Wired that says, <laughs> "Eat cheese and risk strangulation." <laughs> <laughs> Is that, 
Oh, like, yeah, it, it, it just seems to say the more cheese you eat, the more likely you are to. So maybe that's why it's that 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 old wives' tale about eat, <laughs> eating cheese gives you nightmares. No, eating cheese yeah. just puts you at more risk of being being killed by your bed sheets. <laughs> Clearly, is it, is it that you're having a nightmare and you're thrashing around overnight while you're sleeping and you tangle yourself up and and die that way? I was thinking about about changing your bed sheets, but maybe it is the nightmares. Yeah, yeah. Or it's those lovely clogged arteries from all the deep fried cheese <laughs> that you're changing your duvet and just no nope, gives out yawn. <laughs> or it's the meat slash cheese sweats <laughs> <laughs> seeps into your bed sheets, makes them really heavy. I mean, I, d- I just, I don't know on that one. That one's just, that's just the way it is. I mean, it's a scary correlation. Was it ninety four point seven percent correlation? Yeah. Which is, which is mad. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Ah, oh, the hey ho. <laughs> oh, I can't remember what the th- what was the third graph. So I got it from a slightly different or slightly burnt. Oh, right. Uh, number of cyclists killed in a collision with a stationary object um people who died by falling from a ladder so these two both correlate as well so the more people that have died falling from a ladder the more people have died uh colliding with a stationary object while on the while on a bike such as an occupied ladder <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well you say this right I, i'm curious right so if you look at if you look at the graph on the left hand side it's got deaths us and it's got two four eight ten twelve as a scale on the other two, side two it's four six eight ten two four 12. six eight sorry yeah did i miss up the six <laughs> i was gonna say that they've messed around with some of the axes but <laughs> but not that badly that they're missing numbers <laughs> all right mr mathematician <laughs> the, the cardinal sin of not starting the graphs is zero i mean there's yeah Data but, manipulation 101. But on the other side, but it's got, then on the other side, it goes 320, 340, 360, 380, 400, 420, 440. Which one's which? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I reckon the higher number's a ladder. Do you reckon the higher number's a ladder? Yeah, I do. I've you... fallen off a ladder, that's why. I won't go up ladders, that's, that's rule number one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But then, yeah, I suppose it is. It's cyclists killed hitting a stationary object, not just cyclists killed, which is going to reduce the number of of uh, deaths you're looking at. Exactly. But yeah, but yeah, there is a, a huge gap. You know, kind of, if you're looking at single digits to the hundreds. Yeah. I'm, now I'm just trying to figure out how, as a as a cyclist, I would have died hitting a stationary object. Well, yeah, if you you could be flying down a hill at like forty miles an hour. I've done that. Hit a right, so hit a pothole. You go flying into yeah. a parked car. Hit yeah. the parked car. Go flying over the top of the car. Hit a tree, <laughs> sideways. Stationary object. <laughs> land. On a fork that's embedded in the ground, but with the prongs upwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, oh. and whilst whilst you're trying to regain consciousness, <laughs> the tree falls on you. <laughs> Stationary yeah. object Peas on over you. the handlebars into a canal. Into yes. Shark infested canal. Onto the shopping trolley infested canal. I mean. And then, or bed, bed sheet infested. <laughs> you get tangled up in the bed sheets. Thrashing around. <laughs> Thrashing around in this alley, this, this river. Oh. Ah, help me. Help me. Oh, it's a bit of cheese. Ah, help me. Ah. There's a bit more cheese. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have done, I've done some ridiculous speeds on a bike, but, um, I was going down a mountain at that time, um, a road bike, um, and my brake cable snapped. That's a fun story. <laughs> oh, <good God. laughs> I was going. I'd, 
I'd gone to the Alps and I'd cycle. I was on my road bike cycling up like Le, uh, this one was Le Dis Alps. Must have been Le Dis Alps that I broke, snapped the cable. So you cycle up at like you know four and a half miles an hour because it's up a mountain, and then you go to go back back down. Um, and I came up to one of the hairpins and pulled my rear brake and I just do a ping and I was like, I'm not slowing down anymore. <laughs> ah. so go to the school kid, right? Shoes on the ground. <laughs> yeah. God, I'm away bolted the in. <laughs> I'm bolted in. It doesn't work like that at that, that sort of speed. Um, you know the what only I would have done? <laughs> I would have thrown myself off the bike and then skidded on my knees like kids do at weddings. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean kids do at weddings? People do at weddings. <laughs> okay, men. Let's be honest, men. L- 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 men. <laughs> <laughs> there is now going to be a video of, of me and Adam doing that at our coach's <laughs> wedding later on this year. <laughs> do it. See, so you can break break the record. Longest slide. Slide. Knee slide. <laughs> I'm buying a new suit. <laughs> <laughs> With knee pads. With knee pads. <laughs> That's the way to do it. But yeah, that I mean that again. It correlates quite well. I don't know how this would. I can't see how this would, this correlation would work. But other than the fact that the stationary object must be the person on the ladder, yeah, <laughs> and that the chances of being killed by that said ladder are obviously a lot lower than the person who stood on the ladder falling from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it just goes to show that manipulating data in a graph the right way, you can use it to to prove anything that you like. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, how did you fall off a ladder, Jerry? I am curious about that now. Um, his kid well, on a bike it? hit the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was like, got, there I was. was Rachel's fault. <laughs> Stationary object. <laughs> and um, I was in the middle of the road in the Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> Just knocked me off my ladder. Um, no, I was, I was outside. I was painting the um, the rendering on the outside of the house. Oh right! And just completely out of the blue, one of the legs of this ladder—it's <laughs> an old ladder. Bear in mind, um, just buckled, and I fell about ten feet <laughs> onto my ass. <laughs> um, but luckily, on a serious note, luckily I fell onto the grass, so yeah. I was okay. But mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. No, I, I'm run it... over by a cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up a lot worse. <laughs> it's okay. No, I, I, we, I, Adam knows my my fear of heights after um after Budapest. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will not go and stand on a wall. Right. I don't blame you. That that was not a fun <laughs> wall to be stood on, let alone doing the stupid thing of going on one leg for, just for the benefit of a photo. Taekwondo trips, Jerry, will often and listeners will often end up in us taking sidekick poses, you know, holding your leg out in, in locations. So we went around Budapest and, and did that like in many places i know why adam is currently cringing um, and i am going to tell the story in a minute because it's probably it's the only time i thought i'm gonna lose a lung i'm gonna lose a lung if it if it didn't happen to me this would probably be my favorite story of all time <laughs> so we're going around and we're doing like random sidekicks so the, the, the specific bit there was a castle that had a 40 foot drop the other side and um, it was myself um and Adam and another another person actually called Adam and our coach, and the the other the other person was ridiculously good. Like his balance was on point. He's super flexible, so all his kicks looked just. He was a bit younger. He just had no fear. <laughs> he had, and he had that's, no that's fear. My excuse, right? So we got onto the. You stepped up probably two foot onto this wall. Oh, it's pro- maybe even higher actually. Probably three, four foot because it's probably chest level onto this wall and then the other side it's just a 40 foot drop but the angle that it was meant it developed a really nice side kick so so yeah. um yeah. this other person Bear goes mind, up. this 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 wall was was probably the best part of a meter thick <laughs> you know if you told any of us if you painted like that width on the floor and said right stand there and do a side kick yeah easy yeah <laughs> suddenly put a 40 foot drop the other side of it and oh the, the <laughs> yeah. knees turn to jelly <laughs> 
But, but it wasn't on the wall that this injury happened, Dom. No. So it was at the bridge. We, this this was a lot later on, and, and I, I decided not to go on the wall because I, I was not trusting my balance at this point. I'd been having balance issues. Anyway, we're not in Taekwondo gear, right? We're in normal civvies, as we sometimes refer to it as. Jeans, um, t-shirt, hoodie. You know. Yeah, jeans, t-shirt, hoodie. Anyway, we're on the bridge along in the center of Budapest, and um, it's off, it's quite busy, and we want you want to get a nice quick, you know, nice quick one. So sometimes it's like Lo- lovely background. So we're you know spending a bit of time getting some photos, <laughs> um, and I'd I'd taken one, had a look at it, um, and went, nah, that's rubbish. Foot position's all wrong. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back for another one. Trying to do it nice and slowly, you know, get the get the right position. I was like, no. Right, one last shot. There's a little gap between people walking past. Right, I've got this. And for the for the first time that day, went for a, like a, a quick kick. And uh, the jeans that I had on had no no stretch in them. And I felt the seam move. Uh, let's put this delicately from one side to the other. <laughs> So he busts out his sidekick, and then you just see his face be like, like the eyes like pop out like you get in All a cartoon. All the colour drain. Oh, I think it's just the I'm eyes lent, popping out. I'm lent over the wall into, like, considering just jumping over the wall into the river and ending it right there and then. Next thing I know, Dom's beside me in the same position, but crying oh, with laughter. laughter. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, the, is... other, the other two full of sympathy for me. <laughs> yeah, I bet. What's even better <laughs> is is our coach who was taking the photo just kept taking photos. So there is there is, you know, the legs going up. You know, it's almost like a in a um, you know like stop motion. Leg One is going up. Books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> leg is going up. Seam is going over certain male anatomy. Oh, leg needs to come back in. And then there's a there's a picture. He's, and it's that kind of. Almost like real stereotypical. I'm in pain position. You've got both your hands on your knees. <laughs> Tell me Just you weren't fully doubled over that day. No, no. I don't know if that's better or worse. But since then, like any time I've just pe- tried on a pair of new jeans, it's like, yep, these are a slightly stretchy fabric. <laughs> we'll go for those. So I can kick in these. The things that we do to get good taekwondo shots. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Not oh, worth it. Not worth it. Right. Bo- bonus question. Bonus question. Bonus question. And we're pro- this is where um, Adam may not live for the uh, t- when when uh, his other heart, when his wife hears this. Um, does full moons or the wind affect the behaviour of children? Because according to teachers, it does. Spurious correlation. I can see Jerry thinking. Strong winds would. You reckon strong winds would make them go crazy? Yeah. It'll whip kids up into a frenzy. (laughs) We've already got like a pun in this document as well. I mean, yep. I mean, I mean, wind is funny. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that says that fart jokes are not funny is, is clearly wrong. It's lying. <laughs> oh dear. No, no. I I did ask my uh, my good lady this, and she said, "Yes, wind wind does make kids hyperactive." What? Uh, and there you go. Was news to me. Um, but uh, yeah, the the other note I was like, uh, and and definitely the moon, because you know all kids are lunatics, <laughs> with the original definition of the mm. word. <laughs> I understand. Well, that's two puns that we've managed to to get in and now. <laughs> You're welcome. The, the, right, I can kind of understand the wind because there's like a causation that the wind causes. But apparently, and it's the one that drives me nuts, apparently that if it's a full moon, kids at school are crazy. And I, don't, I can't believe it. I've taught 
<laughs> juniors at, on a on a at taekwondo on a full moon. They're just as annoying then as they are normally. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie. No, then they're not that bad. But you know, it's like what? No, I can't. I can't say I've ever noticed it that dramatically. But then, I suppose even in a taekwondo class, you've only got a handful of kids. You've not got a class of thirty. So, I always had the rule number one: don't work with kids and don't work with animals. No. I mean, I, I, I don't. No. Uh, what sort of animals? Taekwondo. N- no. Ooh. Animals are dangerous enough. That's the last thing that we need to be able to do is start teaching animals how to kick and punch back. <laughs> I don't trust any of them you anyway. Back? Why are you kicking and punching animals? Well, I'm not, kicking, I'm not kicking and punching <laughs> animals at all. They can stay the heck away from me. But can you imagine if you, if you had like a, a fully grown male gorilla and you taught that gorilla how to do no. taekwondo? No. That would be incredible, wouldn't it? No. Have you seen the video of the uh, the grizzly bear swinging around a big stick, and it looks like he's he's doing martial arts with it? <laughs> that just reminds me of, like the original mean of the Star Wars kid, then, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god, I'd forgotten about that. Now we're talking. Oh, that about brings it. out memories. Wow. That was the best. <laughs> What's happened to him? I wonder. I'm gonna Google it. I, I do remember seeing like um, a collection of memes and and where they are now. So you've got like the the success kid, um, yes, the crazy the crazy girlfriend, the one with the really wide eyes. Um, what else was there? There's a the girl uh, Chloe in the back of the car that's doing the yes 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 yes, yes the yes, WTF the, look yeah the WTF yeah. look yeah. Um, who else? Uh, um, the kind of the guy that's dressed with the Burberry cap. Is it Burberry? It's like a like a yeah. Russian like Burberry cap, and he's in like yeah, a really yeah, thick yeah. jacket. Um, and I can't remember. I can't remember the mean name. And then it's like always in pain. That the, the old bloke that's always in pain. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Wait, look at this. What happened to the Star Wars kit? Yeah. Ghislaine Raza unwittingly became the first internet video superstar when some classmates uploaded some stolen video of Raza practicing his lightsaber moves. <laughs> um, well, he sued the families of the guys who leaked the video wow. and got a settlement of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He slimmed down and decided to pursue a law degree at McGill University in his native Canada. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. That. Well, that's that. what he's doing. I mean, that's that's peak American culture, isn't it? <laughs> I don't like what you've done. I'm going to sue you <laughs> yeah, and your yeah. family. That's definitely a yeah, very Western cultured over there, kind of Canada, America type thing. And a yeah. court awarded him two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the emotional <laughs> one <distress>. million dollars. <laughs> Jeez, Louise! I'm just not sure it'd be one of those things. It'd be like. I mean, like honestly, he could have monetized the video, and he probably would have made like, you know, if you make like one pence for every time that's played. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look. I suppose now he'd be turning into an NFT and being a billionaire. <laughs> you know what it reminds uh, me of? Do you remember that episode of Family Guy when he's got the mini lightsaber and he's cutting a piece <laughs> of cheese with it? Remember that? Is he cutting the face or is he cutting the edge off? <laughs> edge. Like a normal person would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing, isn't it? Because they said like if you used a lightsaber on a on a on a loaf of bread instead of a normal knife, you'd be instantly making toast. <laughs> and does that mean if you were stabbed with a lightsaber, you'd instantaneously be um, cauterized? Yeah, it would be. I was always yeah. thinking that in the first Star Wars. Yeah. You go to Mos Eisley. Yeah. Well, you never see any blood, do you? No, it's true. Because it's cauterized. Because yeah, this is very true. Okay, right. Well, we we didn't. I don't think we upset teachers too much, other than saying that it's all ridiculous. You're all silly. <laughs> Kids are always nuts. <laughs> the the moon. But they do a very to... worthwhile job. They are. They uh, they do. We 
I'm yes. very appreciative of them all. Yes, very appreciative. <laughs> Please don't kick me. <laughs> that's only because you've got. Good. That's only because you've got to sleep job. next to one of them. <laughs> I like all the caveats you're just throwing in there. <laughs> yeah. Anything to cover my own back. <laughs> Stop a bit. Okay, um, we'll go on to other topics then. Um, this is an interesting one, and probably where I think you know, as we've we've come down, we've come down from our silliness earlier. <laughs> Jerry may have just found something on Google. This I, I have weird. just found so it's my one of my favourite quotes from Star Wars. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy <laughs> than this, when, than than this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're terrible people. We are terrible people. Um, in the other topics, we wanted to discuss a little bit around changing jobs and, and, and the benefits of doing what you love. So I know um, I mentioned at the beginning, Adam has changed his job recently, no longer does a boring desk job. You are now a fully qualified PT. Um, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've now gone into the scary world of technically being fully self-employed. Um, so after... Uh, doing a, a degree um, straight into an office job in the civil service. Uh, five, li- five years later, went part-time setting up a taekwondo school and competing. Um, and then about five years after that, made the, uh, the final step to uh, leave the professional world behind um, <laughs> and, get, and get fully involved in, uh, as I say, the, the Kind of health and fitness sector. Um, so yeah, I'm now working in a um, a 24-hour commercial gym, um, and as a a personal trainer, while I'm still doing the the taekwondo stuff uh, on the side or on the side in the evenings. Um, so yeah, yeah, made that jump middle of December, um, which was. Uh, I think I, I qualified as a, a level three personal trainer in November and then started looking for jobs pretty much straight away. Um, got an offer, made that jump um, because it was it was very much time for me to move on from the office job that I had. Um, and yeah, very fortunate to A, have the, the Taekwondo business, which is, uh, you know, covering some of that required income <laughs> and a a very very supportive wife uh who uh yeah actually not just being supportive but encouraged me to to take the jump uh and do something that's ultimately going to be much better for me health wise in all aspects of of the definition of the word yeah I think that was definitely one thing that we've discussed before, like, um, like squad and 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 our taekwondo lessons. Um, you know, I know, I I can attest at the moment where work has been so stressful. I've noticed that uh, I'm no longer can eat what I want and remain as skinny as I want. It's I'm very much like, hmm, I need to sort myself out here because I'm getting a little bit uh, thick around the middle, shall we say, um, and. Well, that's all the squats that you're doing, Tom. <laughs> all the squats and deadlifts. Is... It's not. It's you're, all you're, the you're getting crap. bigger with muscle. <laughs> it's all the crap I'm eating. Um, and I know that me and Jerry have discussed it quite quite a lot when it comes to like the mental health side of things. So, um, I, you know, I changed my job uh, last year. You know, I went from being... Um, I'm happy to say what I used to do. I used to code. I used to be a developer. I really enjoyed it, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I can't keep up with the technology. It just wasn't wasn't something I was ever great at, and was really passionate. I'm really passionate about helping people, so I made that step into into line management and and things like that. And and I know Jerry that you you do that for a similar reason. Yeah. Hmm. To uh, <laughs> I, I've caught him at an awkward time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, don't really much, well, I don't know how much to get you. well yeah okay yes <laughs> yeah we, we don't want to bleep anything do we no, <laughs> Jerry's no, we very nervous when we talk about work no, I'll, I'll we talk about work yeah. <laughs> but, the, but but also for yourself it was also the mental health side of things as imagine as well as the, as the yeah yeah so as I say um, 
had a you know office job in the civil service good group of people that i worked with but um you know a lot of it felt very much uh small cog in a big machine um and then you know you'd spend a few months doing some some research some analysis writing a report sending it off to the customer who'd asked for it having said it was really important work that you needed to do and then you might get a thank you email back and then you're like all oh, right okay all that time and effort put into that and i don't actually know if it's made a difference at all in any of the decisions being made um and then uh, i still remember one of the, the conversations i had with a couple of colleagues uh, it was one of them who plays hockey at the weekends um and came in and was like oh my you know i'm getting too old for this my knees are, are knackered um and i was like, oh you know, here's a couple of stretches that you could do maybe some strengthening exercises and i went oh do you know what that has given me like more satisfaction just giving that small bit of advice than months of work okay maybe i need to look into kind of getting into personal training side of things um started that and then i think i got like the level two qualification shortly after that covid happened um and i'd spent you know all of that time pretty much working from home um teaching taekwondo online so barely spoke to anyone when we were able to get back out teaching outside you know i was looking at uh my watch which does the lovely thing of tracking my steps and i was like well i've done 150 steps all day and then I was going out teaching taekwondo and i was like wondering why the weight was creeping up and the the mood was uh dropping off a cliff basically um and then yeah since since changing jobs my i think we looked uh at, at the weekend and the we past did. month my uh, average daily step count is like 12 13000 um and that's you know without particularly putting in any effort that's just being in a non desk job um so i'm now much more active throughout the day i uh I'm speaking with people throughout the day as well, um, and make, yeah, you know, I'm starting to make that that difference in a few people's lives. I can't snack quite as easily. Um, you know, it's being sat at your desk with a cup of coffee is far too easy to go through a full pack of uh, digestive biscuits, <laughs> but can't really do that as a PT in a gym. You know, you're, gonna get, you're not really well, going to get It's that accountability, your isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And also, it's accountability and opportunity. So, so you know, with just, um, you know, upping that, that daily exercise quite a bit, sorting out the diet a little bit, you know, still getting the occasional takeaway and, and enjoying food. Um, I have just had a quick look. I think I've lost about four kilos since since January. Can, can and I that's just purely you from change of job. <laughs> can I, Go can on I just challenge you on something there? One, one thing that you said, you said you don't really have the opportunity to eat a packet of digestives when you're a PT. And, and you have to create the opportunities, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to sew a special pocket on the inside of your shorts, as long as you don't go for those like 80s style shorts, which are really tight, Around the I mean, area. I like a chocolate I mean, biscuit, so I don't think that's going to be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a cool pouch. <laughs> We've got a staff room. I might just need to, to tuck some biscuits up there. <laughs> just disappear every five minutes. Just come back. <laughs> Do some squats. Do it. <laughs> Do some squats. No, and I... I, I, I I love it and I'm jealous. No, I'm happy to say that I'm yeah. I'm I'm jealous. Um, I'm not, and I admire you for it. It's, it's it, I I, I, yeah, it's yeah. I I'm I feel very much in a, a privileged position to be able to give it a go. Mm. Um, and it, it's so far, it's definitely been the best decision I could have made for 
uh, physical and mental health um, and hopefully not too long it's going to be a reasonable decision to have made from a, a <laughs> financial <laughs> health point of view as well uh, not a great that. decision for McVitie's <laughs> no <laughs> oh, good job I saw all they're cursing you now yeah. <laughs> but I mean you, you you say that but I mean Jerry we've spoken before about um, like what am I willing to sacrifice um, you know and and you know, I look at it and I know other people that are doing similar things. It's like they want to, you know, I like helping people. Um, we did a bunch of um, one-to-ones with um, all the end of year reviews as the time was was just around the corner and everyone that I support had done really well, you know, they were like that. And I, I said, I said, it sounds really cheesy, but it felt almost like a proud dad. Like I felt like it, it, he'd laugh and it was such a good feeling. And then I've had, yeah. you know, I've had weeks like this week where I'm currently, I have to deal with some idiotic dictator invading another country um and it's a horrible feeling it's horrible because you mm. care about people and i think that's that's the big yeah. thing um i know that my pt is going to get on my back because i've not done any exercise this week cause it's just you know stress levels and things like that yeah. um but you know and it's about what are you willing to sacrifice and i think both me and jerry are like we're never going to get to like you know ceo because we we're not we're not gonna i don't want that much stress in my life yeah th- just to be clear as well dom it's not because we can't it's mm. because we don't want to that's a life choice yes yeah yeah uh there's a little bit of me that i don't think i, I think there's an element of selfishness or um cold-bloodedness to be able to get to that that point that position Agree. You have to be able to make yeah. the really you difficult need to decision. Be, you need a, a strong element of ruthlessness. Mm, that's the word I was looking for, yeah. To get to the top of a, a large company. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think I could do yeah. that. I couldn't. Oh. I wonder but, how ruthless... No, the, the that's that's s- why I've made my own. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you're still second in command, no. aren't you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> entirely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's my name on all of the paperwork, but I don't really make the decisions. It's... I'm not the real power. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> yeah, I am just the the face. Yeah, I, but I... I am Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, yep. And after the question <laughs> about the weather and, and the moon, same here. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I mean, I mean, it's right. I mean, it's a perfect example because you know you've you've taken a little bit of financial hit, you know, short term to longer term have like mental, physical, and eventually, hopefully, then financial gain. Because I do not imagine the civil service and promotions is very easy to get by. <laughs> yeah, it was. It wasn't too bad, um, but yeah, it was the it was the day to day enjoyment of the job that, that uh, um, had had faded over the years um, and I you know, thought to myself so, well just about to turn 30 likelihood of me being able to retire the way the economy's going at any stage in my life mm, slim do I want to be stood behind a desk for all of that time yeah no so I thought well I wish I'd have done it five, ten years ago, but the the better, the you know, the only better time is is doing it then. Yeah, and and it I you've you've kind of perfectly segued me into one of my notes. Thank you so much. It's like you had my notes in front of me. <laughs> so I know, I know somebody else who's um going to be changing their job. Um, I'm not going to mention who who they are. Um, she that they've shared with me. Um, and I mean she's one of the most perfect human beings but the thing that that she was sort of saying is that actually where she is in life now she couldn't have actually stepped make the next step she thinks that the experience that she's got allows her to now make that choice so you say maybe you know you would have liked to have done it five ten years ago actually could you have done or do you think like the experience that you've had actually allows you to now make that decision instead yeah yeah I, I I don't think I'd have done a good job of it five, ten years ago. You know, I think the those five years running a running the taekwondo business, but also 
being in front of a class four nights a week has made me a much better more personable kind of instructor um so so yeah it's quite funny actually we've had some other uh new starters in the gym that i'm working in as well um and when it comes to like so we have to do a number of uh, hours for the gym um and within that when teaching kind of group classes and i'm really happy doing that you know yeah i'm very used to, i've spent kind of eight hours a week at least for for the past five years every week being in front of a group of people telling them what to do okay it's different people it's telling them to do slightly different things and then you got some other pts who come in who are happy with that one-on-one personal training bit but like oh group classes ah, scare i don't want to be in front of that many people um yeah so that life experience that i've had has has eased that transition quite nicely Mm, yeah i think that and i think that's a really interesting thing to not only to note to note not only is it good to make these changes but also to look at you never start from zero you're always got that you've always got that life experience and and things like that and it's one of the reasons why i just wanted to bring it up briefly in this podcast to kind of you know we're very we're very passionate about I am, and I know Jerry is. Um, Jerry is hugely passionate about it, more even more so than me, I think. Um, that about looking after not only yourself helps others, but also about using kind of keeping that ment- ment- mentality with with how you approach things is just so so important, um, mm. especially with some of the stress that people go through. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant story. I love it. I yeah. Love stuff like this. Even if Jerry's written all the notes about him becoming an astronaut, pilot, neurosurgeon, actor, or the president, <laughs> which I think he could do all th- all five at the same time. <laughs> yeah, why not? So, yeah. I mean, if you get if you become an actor, then that allows you <laughs> to do all the others. <laughs> not if I'm acting alongside Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not. Where Where do you want to be president of, though? Had you thought that far? Or just a president. (laughs) (laughs) It's why not? Why not? not? (laughs) Got to start somewhere. Coffee fan. Love it. Oh man! Right. Speaking of health, let's go on to the final bit: improving our health. Um, We've been going for quite a while already. Actually, I've just noticed. and probably good two hours of actual podcast because we always have the 15 minutes of blithering which we have recorded <laughs> and at some point we'll release as a, as a compilation which I'm sure everyone will enjoy um, might just release a 10 minute compilation of Jerry Wee's laughing we should have it on a platinum <laughs> disc <laughs> <laughs> no, throw, throw in the occasional wow yeah. wow <laughs> wow, wow. <clears throat> So previously, um, we were looking at the just one thing method uh, that we very briefly spoke about. Um, it's interesting. I've, um, I've, I actually stopped using it. So I went on holiday last week. Picked a right rubbish week to go on holiday, didn't I? Uh, some interesting internal company things that happened that I missed. It's like uh, basically it was it's the equivalent of you know you have that one day off sick and that's when all the fights happen at school, the teacher goes in crying, all those types of things. Like, what did I miss? Um but <laughs> you laugh Joe. Fight, fight, yeah, it's fight, exactly fight, what it was. fight. But I actually stopped using it and then I realised about half of through yesterday is I probably needed to use it uh to kind of get myself on track. Because I found I didn't need to use it if I wasn't stressed. So uh, if I was, you know, if I was compass mentis, that's a big word for quarter past 11 at night, um, then I was fine at kind of just sort of, you know, just going, there's my task list, I'm just going to get on with it. But the instant I become stressed and I get a bit disorientated, it's really good to really focus you. So um, I realised I should have used it this week, Jerry, when I, when I reached out on Thursday. Yeah, probably. It's been a, it was a rough week, so. It's been, yeah. <laughs> we're a bit shell shocked. Yeah, let's not even go there. Um, so I, I, I think we won't go into detail too much. I think because that's just one thing. I think really helps when 
uh, let's just play it bluntly when shit hits the fan. Um, shit hits it um, this week that we've had to mm. had to deal with some crap. Um, but next, um, Adam's put some thoughts down for us to try. It's it's very challenging. Oh, I'm not sure where yeah. we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I've taken a, a different approach to the to their health definition. Um, so I've gone more along the uh, the mental and social health route, um, and I, I think, to be honest, given given what's currently happening, I, I'm I'm probably going to say maybe not one a day like I initially su- suggested, <laughs> but <laughs> or as needed. You know, you've got to you've got to be yeah, maybe an as needed, or maybe uh, you know look out for opportunities to. Um, perform selfless acts for someone else um so you know the the few ideas that that i put in was kind of you know helping someone cross a road paying for a stranger's parking or coffee um not starbucks (laughs) not starbucks far too expensive (laughs) Uh, (laughs) or or wait for them to order first (laughs) when they they just get a small americano you're like i'll get that for you (laughs) <laughs> oh, and I wouldn't mind a toasty. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, spend a bit of time uh, litter picking in in your local area, um, something like that, where where there's no immediate payoff for you <laughs> apart from that that kind of the warm fuzzy feeling inside of having done a good deed. Um, who added that, Dom? Did you add? Did you add the last like four or five? Who added the last like four or five? I've just read them in depth. <laughs> Wasn't me. It was Jerry. I think you should read no, these out, nothing, Jerry. Nothing to nothing to see here. Go, read them out. I can't. You, you'll have to read them out. Read them out. <laughs> so, Should, the shall one, I go for it? <laughs> Jerry. The one that yeah, got me was the second one. So so Jerry's Jerry's suggestions for selfless acts. Uh, reading a bedtime story to an adult, <laughs> taking care of a footballer's cats. That was the one that got me. <laughs> Grating someone's cheese the right way. <laughs> Finishing pe- people's sentences for them. Is that sandwiches or sentences? <laughs> Both. I think it was correcting people's toilet roll placements. <laughs> That is a selfless act. You've done it wrong, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> but you don't Is it selfless or is it entirely selfish? <laughs> I'd say it's more selfish. <laughs> oh dear. Is it shellfish though? Oh. Get some shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's an internal shrimple. joke, I'm afraid to say, Adam. Oh, shrimp. <laughs> Creep it shrimp. Um <laughs> just, that's I apologize, that's why I snorted with laughter halfway through your explanation. So I apologise, Adam. I'm really sorry for that. But I'd only just read the extended version. I thought that's a bit longer than I remember it being. <laughs> and then I saw it. I was like, hang on a minute. What is this? And then I saw the cat one. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna descend into chaos again. <laughs> So there you go. Your your next challenge is to look for those opportunities to um, put some good into the world. I'm going to take I a like video. It. I'm going to take a video of me grating cheese wrong and send it to you. To check. <laughs> no, I love it as well. <laughs> I love it as well. Oh, a how-to video, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> how-to grate cheese. This yeah. way. No. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you said... You great cheese <laughs> face first. <laughs> but our panel said If you do oh. that you've got to get some of those uh, googly eye stickers and put it on the cheese as well. <laughs> That's dreadful. That's dreadful. Oh dear. And and the one that, the other one that made me laugh as well, which um uh, Laura will love, is uh, getting something from a high shelf for somebody. I have to admit, I usually use my height as an advantage. Um, one thing to do in uh, in Laura's flat, she's got a uh, um the extractor fan isolation switch, 
is above the door frame and she can't reach it and I can reach it so I just go and switch it off every now and then <laughs> which, which winds her up because <laughs> she has to get a chair <laughs> oh dear oh. <laughs> so she, we've got in our kitchen we've got a little um, kind of a little fold out mini stool step kind of thing it's, it's like less than a, a foot high um, but it's it's referred to as a, a, the Jenny step. So, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, my good lady is is just a smidge under five foot tall. So top shelves and cupboards are are out of reach without the Jenny step. <laughs> um, and uh, we we've used that title so often that uh, my mum thought was, that was actually <laughs> the name of the product. <laughs> Well, like a jerry can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, she, thought, she thought they were they were they were Jenny steps. <laughs> I can just imagine it going into B and Q. You got any Jenny steps? You got any Jenny steps? Some what? Sorry, Jenny steps. I have no idea what you're on about. The ladder's over there next to the cycle. Oh my god. I don't think she'll listen to this, or at least this far, but if you are, sorry, Mum. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't know that I'm going to wind her up next time. I've seen her for ages. Uh, I'm gonna don't, you up. Dare, don't you dare, Tom. <laughs> I so am. <laughs> I'll make your next squad trip hell. <laughs> <laughs> you do anyway. You do anyway. <laughs> I think we're done, gents. Uh. I think we've gone oh. through everything. I'm and really that was a good it ended up being really good and it was a really jovial considering current climate. So um hmm. I wanna say thank you to you both for um again joining us on this podcast and getting through it. I think it was uh it was good. I enjoyed it and it reminds yeah. me every time I want to do this. Um I'm gonna do the cruel thing as I always do. Um what are your final thoughts? We shall start with... We'll go with Jerry today. Oh. <laughs> no, I think we should go Adam first. Okay, we'll go with Adam no, first. No, final no. thoughts. No, final no, thoughts, no, Adam. No. <laughs> final thoughts. Um, well, I suppose, firstly, thank you very much for having me on. I've uh, I've really enjoyed it. My cheeks are aching a little bit. Um, although it is very much past my bedtime, having alarm at quarter past five this morning to get into the gym um yeah um, uh, another early morning tomorrow as well um but no thanks very much thanks to everyone for listening um and i, I think at the moment i think it's, it's probably just important to look for those bright happy moments you know every day is going to have some good in it um and with the world seemingly walking from one global disaster to the next um finding those those few moments of peace and happiness each day um will see you through yeah perfect That's jerry awesome. jerry finishes well finish this off <laughs> I, I was, i'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna finish this <laughs> study um no i th i i just want to end on the same note that with the same exactly the same words that I ended the this week's quiz on, mm. which is let's pray for peace, for everyone to be safe, and for a hell of a lot more love in this world. I'm thinking of everybody. Mm. Yeah, perfect, perfect, Jerry. Here, here. Um, I'm going to do the the YouTube spiel. Um, I I, I echo both of these, um, the lovely gentlemen their the comments. I think. Um, you, as I said, I've said before, you, you two both are some of my favourite people, um, which I'm sure that um, Adam, you may use against me at some point, but um, <laughs> it's on record. At every point, <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> what what I will say, um, Adam, as he is as a PT, and obviously he started up new. Um, I will, we will link his uh, socials on on these videos because um, we get we get a fair okay. few. Um, but he is in your. Uh, where is the? Um, is it Totten? Uh, this is Southampton. So Southampton. Southampton, Shirley. Um, but you know, I've uh, 
happy to write training plans for for anyone. I've uh, got a client out in New Zealand at the moment, so I you did know, see. Yeah, distance. Yeah, distance is not a problem if you're yeah. dedicated. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So um, please, uh, if if you are looking for somebody to help you out, um, I can attest to the last ten years of training with and being trained by Adam in some capacity um, definitely proved me even if that was how do I get as good as that um, and it's some respects I, I don't know right but other respects that I never quite made it so um, but yeah he absolutely if, if you're looking for somebody to help you out in in the uh, well anywhere but um, please please do please do hit him up um, and then I'm going to do a cheeky plug we now have an Instagram account which has nothing on it um, we have a distinct and jovial Instagram account but um, we will eventually be posting behind the scenes a few photos maybe a few clips um, and, and so please do look out for that um, and then I just want to echo what these gents said the world is really not in a nice place um, I've had uh, some dark days this week um, thinking about people that I care about very deeply I hope that everybody in Ukraine stays as safe as they can um, all my love and wishes are out to you to, to ensure that this um, as we say go to the winchester and wait for it to blow over but genuinely want it to, mm. to to finish and go with that um and to everybody else listeners thank you so much for listening for watching for being part of this journey um we will catch you all on the next podcast looking forward to it thank you dom thanks adam cheers guys take care <laughs>